Today I'd like to give you a relatively easy and somewhat hand-waving explanation using these simplified figures what you see here on RAID 0, RAID 1 and RAID 5 which are the three most frequently used standard RAID levels among computer enthusiasts and also these RAID levels are sometimes used in small production environments now, in addition to this, in the case of the RAID level 5, I will also discuss the so-called exclusive OR logical operation, which is then used to calculate the so-called parity bit. And then I'm going to discuss what is the actual functionality of this parity bit, this process which is done to reconstruct the original data in the case of a RAID 5 array or even in a RAID 6 array which we're not going to discuss today using the parity bit if one of the disks have been failed is called the RAID 5 or RAID 6 rebuild and the state if we lose one or in the case of the RAID 6 maximum two of the disks is called the state when the array is in a degraded state after we have done this uh, quick overview on the today's topics for this video, then before we actually jump into the discussion on the RAID itself, first of all then let us look why do we actually need this RAID and in order to try to explain that, I'm here now showing a simplified diagram of how does a traditional personal computer look like. So as you see here normally you have a motherboard and you have uh, nowadays in modern motherboards couple of these SATA ports coming out of the motherboard and in uh, relatively inexpensive personal computers you will have a single mechanical disk attached to one of these SATA ports. Since we have a single disk here, this means that this disk will then hold both the underlying system, whether that's Linux, Windows, FreeBSD, you name it, and also the data for the applications themselves. In the case of a traditional mechanical disk, what goes on is that there are a couple of these uh, spinning disks inside the device itself and then there are multiple of these read and write heads which is shown here in this triangle so normally the head is at the very tip and then these heads are moving along the disk and as an example let us now talk about the different patterns of whether one have a sequential or a random data pattern. As an example, let us suppose that you have now a data pattern where then you can align this head here at the very beginning, then you wait until the disk rotates at that position, and then you can nicely read in this whole amount of data where you read in the bits after another. So this is called a sequential data pattern and uh, such data pattern is representative for applications like mostly video editing, audio editing, most kind of uh, multimedia stuff, or also if you work on really high resolution like 4K pictures and such. So that means that the head need to move only once and then you can read uh, a lot of data actually. So when it comes to sequential data flow, the traditional mechanical disks are not so bad because once they have found where they can do the read or write, then they just do it. Now in uh, stark contrast to this, when we are talking about a random data pattern, which is shown here in this uh, purple here, this means that the head need to go like crazy from one cylinder to another and one need to always wait until the disk is at the right position with the read head to read or write a small amount of data here. And such kind of random I.O. patterns are mostly then representative for database type applications. As an example, MySQL 
or if you have a PHP server or any type of uh, server, you often have this uh, kind of random data pattern, which is uh, totally destroying the uh, data transfer rate of a traditional mechanical disk here. And this means that the applications themselves are completely starving for I.O. So practically the limiting factor for the application is mainly the disk I.O. here. This is why in most modern computers, actually these uh, traditional mechanical disks have been long ago replaced by solid state disks where one doesn't have now this head movement. So it means that they can give a lot better random I.O. pattern but please keep in mind that actually these uh, solid state disks simply have not been available a couple of years ago in the market. And at that time, especially the random IO was a really, really devastating load on any type of application. So let us suppose that here now we have a solid state disk, which is uh, then great because our random read and write is a lot faster. However, one then still need to recall that the sequential throughput of a solid state disk is actually not considerably better than what a traditional mechanical disk can provide. A big issue with SSDs is that the price when it comes to storing terabytes or even petabytes of data is just not really feasible even for large companies. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time if you go to a real production environment you will find that the real data, the long time storage, is still the good old mechanical disk. Now, even if everything is very much right with our sequential and random throughput, still there is an issue, namely if we have here just a single disk, then we definitely have a so-called single point of failure, namely, if something happens now with this disk, for whatever reasons, whether it's a mechanical disk, an SSD, a flash card, whatever, doesn't matter. At that time, our database application or server application is gonna stop working. Our video editing <laughs> definitely gonna stop working. And you might not care about your video editing software, but let us suppose that if this is now a database server or a web server for a company, now that means that the company is losing some serious amount of money until this whole uh, server gonna come back to production. And this is why in real production environments, one cannot really afford to have these uh, single points of failure. And this is another reason why RAID is actually used very often. Then now let us finally turn our attention towards the real topic today of uh, what is then RAID. Well, I can tell you it's definitely not this uh, bug killer what most people are thinking about whenever they are hearing first the word RAID. The underlying idea is really, really basic and totally hand-waving. Because, as you see, you can have multiple disks attached to the motherboard and most enthusiasts actually have more than one hard disk in their machines. So it's not really a surprise for them. And for industry that is long ago uh, must have to have multiple disks in a single server. The main idea is simply that if you have now multiple disks, then you can somehow, using different RAID logics or mechanisms, you can actually split the load among the different disks. And based on the different type of RAID logic, you can either have a better data security or you can get higher speed, or you can have a combination of the two, as I will show you later with RAID 5. So the focus of today's video 
is then on the underlying basic concepts of how is this RAID 0, 1 and 5 is working on a bit level, whether now this is a hardware or software RAID, I'm not gonna discuss it in today's video because it's gonna be anyway a very long video. So we're not gonna care about how is this RAID being implemented. This is definitely the topic for the next video where I'm gonna discuss the real hardware RAID versus software RAID. And also I'm gonna talk about the onboard uh, Intel Matrix RAID and the AMD onboard RAID. In the case of the relatively cheap Intel and AMD motherboards, which are not server grade, then one have a so-called firmware assisted software RAID. So one have to emphasize that this is still a software RAID, meaning that there is no acceleration CPU or there is also no dedicated RAM, which is then accelerating the read and write operations, these, as you see, are definitely the advanced topics. So this is why I'm gonna then separate these in a completely different uh, separate video series where I actually really discuss the differences between the hardware and the software RAID. Based on the number of slides which I made, I just realized at this point that I have a material which is at least a half an hour just to describe now the RAID 0, 1 and RAID 5, especially when we go into the RAID 5 rebuild. Another issue is that, as you might hear, my voice is still considerably scrubby because I caught some really naughty flu last, uh, well, middle of last week. Now I'm recovering. Nevertheless, that's why I didn't post any video because I just simply could not speak. Yeah, so let's hope that tomorrow I'm feeling better and I can actually finish then this uh, concept part and the uh, focus material on RAID 0, 1 and 5. And then uh, after that, I can then really discuss the hardware and software RAID implementations. Many thanks for watching. And let's hope then tomorrow see you in another video on these RAID levels.